Uh, so this is uh, many work of the, uh, my PhD student, Zach Lee. Uh, this is his thesis work and working with Sunash Sharma. He's a Aerosmith Academy uh, scholar, um, a software engineer working closely with Zach. And also there's some work that I will talk about at the, towards the end uh, with Tong Xin Lee, who's another PhD student, and John Pang, who uh, was a former PhD student at Caltech. Uh, and I want to uh, acknowledge a lot of people have contributed to the work, uh, especially people from Powerflex, uh, that's a Caltech startup, uh, and also generations of people going through Caltech um, and also other uh, summer students from various uh, universities. Okay, so California has made its commitment to have 50% renewables by 2030. It actually has increased by now and by 100% uh, clean energy by 2045. And to have 1.5 million zero emission vehicles that mostly EVs by 2025 and 5 million by 2030. And also it just uh, committed itself to ban all new car sales of uh, ICE internal combustion engine cars. So if we, we probably all know this duck curve problem, so I will skip that, but just to point out that uh, this is a duck curve in 2016. So it's a real duck curve. Um, this is the 24 hours of a day. And if you say I do workplace charging and fill the belly, how much, how many EVs can uh, this uh, charge? Then there's 3 million, right? And therefore it really uh, EV charging workplace, especially workplace EV charging and smart grid is really, uh, tightly connected. Uh, not only we can provide the electricity for EV charging, but also EV charging can also uh, help solve the duck curve problem. And therefore there's expectation that there's a lot of um, DR that will become more and more valuable as we integrate more and more renewable towards 100% by 2045. Also in, um, there are surveys that says that if EV charging is available at workplace, then the driver are twice as likely to get an EV. Okay, so that's all the motivation. So let me do three things. One is just to describe a very briefly a uh, EV charging infrastructure that we built at Caltech. And then uh, what we are doing now is once we have this uh, production network, we want to build a layer we call ACN Research Portal. It's a software layer, uh, I guess networking people are very familiar with, that can provide a research facility for people to do research on top of this um, EV charging Infra physical infrastructure. So it provides three things, uh, real data, data-driven simulators, and also live test bed. So this is ongoing work. So I want to focus on this part and give you some example applications very briefly. And then if I have time towards the end, uh, I'll talk about a piece of work, uh, recent work on how do we price demand charge? So the demand charge for those who um, probably hopefully know is that you are charged not only for the energy that you get uh, kilowatt hour, but also the peak rate during, let's say the last month, right? So the site host needs to pay for the peak rate in addition to the energy. Okay, so the test bed, uh, there are two conference papers, um, uh, Global SIP 2016 and Smart Grid 2018 that describes the test bed. Uh, you can, so this is the first garage. Now we have uh, two garages of uh, similar charging facility at Caltech. Um, the first garage built in 2016 has two transformers, 150 kilowatt transformers, um, two of them, and connected to uh, the switch panels and then connected to the chargers. So these are the chargers. Uh, and when a user plugs in, the, they will use a mobile app uh, to input how much energy they need. I need 30 miles. When do they expect to depart, say 5 p.m. this afternoon? Then you communicate with the cloud um, this information. There's a controller in the garage that communicates with the cloud, but also every charger using Zipi uh, in the garage. The controller or the server in the cloud, so it differs a little bit on, on the location, how that is implemented. But somewhere uh, it solves a model predictive control problem, which is a convex quadratic constraint quadratic program. Um, so what is shown here is original linear program. That's what we used before, but now uh, it has been solving QCQP, convex QCQP. Um, every minute you solve this MPC problem that would determine the charging rate for every EV for the coming minute. And then the next minute comes around, you update the state, you resolve the 
uh, optimization problem. And so that's how it works. Uh, and therefore the EV charging um, is optimized very frequently on the order of minutes. So this is a February 2016, the first garage. Uh, it enables, the motivation is that uh, if you only have five or three chargers in a garage, then it doesn't matter what you do, it just does anything reasonable. But if you have, uh, if you have a, say 50 or 100 or a few hundred EV chargers in the garage, then you cannot have uncontrolled charging because it would require very expensive electricity distribution infrastructure, all the transformers, uh, panels and uh, conduits and all of that. But you don't need to because for workplace charging, the charging is very flexible. So you can optimize uh, to lower your capital and operating costs. So the first uh, installation was for 54 uh, chargers. And uh, now we have another garage with a similar uh, size at Caltech. So uh, this has been operational since 2016. By earlier this year, uh, it has delivered a giga, gigawatt hour of electricity equivalent to 3.2 miles, uh, 3.2 million miles, um, avoiding a thousand tons of uh, CO2 equivalent. Uh, so there are various places that has been installed. There's a Caltech startup, Powerflex, that's been uh, uh, founded to commercialize the technology. And about a year ago, it has been uh, acquired by EDF, uh, which is one of the largest utility companies uh, in the world, uh, based in France. Uh, but they have a large operation in San Diego. Uh, okay, there's some pictures of uh, NREL. You have 120 uh, chargers. Uh, some uh, high schools in the Bay Area. Uh, so this is about oh, two years ago, some deployments around uh, in the Bay Area uh, by, by the, um, by the uh, startup. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, this was uh, January, 2018. So the X axis is time. The Y axis is the current, a uh, charging current drawn by each vehicle. So each color curve corresponds to the charging current for a vehicle and stack them up, you get the site load as a function of time. Uh, so this shows, this is actually um, deployment at NREL, Colorado. So the, on the, uh, here is the weekend uh, building load minus the PV. So there's on-site PV at that building uh, the net load building minus the PV on the weekend, you, you see this dark curve uh, because there's a sun during the day. Its axis is again 24 hours. So this is the situation um, during weekday. The uh, building curve is the blue curve. Uh, the uh, this yellow curve is the building minus PV, which is the net load plus EV. So the point is that we want to control the EV charging not only to give the required energy demand for every EV before their deadline, but also in a way so that the peak rate does not exceed a certain preset amount. So in this case, the peak load for the entire building, uh, the net load is uh, uh, limited to 30 to 40 kilowatt because the building needs to pay not only for the energy, but also the peak load uh, during a building, uh, a building period, like uh, a month. So that's the demand charge. So demand charge can be, we don't see them as retailers, as end users, but for businesses, demand charge can be 30% to 50% of the electricity bill. So it is quite significant. And that's why you want to control your EV charging so as to minimize your demand charge. So this is uh, the hit of COVID. So this is like one week, you see this workplace, five days and then the weekend. So this is the, first, uh, the two weeks before COVID shut down and then COVID shut, shut down. So you see that, um, that the impact, uh, the y-axis is the total uh, charging power in megawatt and the x-axis is time in days. Okay, so that's the infrastructure. Uh, uh, we Now we have an ongoing project to try to build a research portal. So it's a research facility uh, that will be open, uh, available, open source available for everyone. Uh, that can help their, uh, they, they might be able to use this to help their research. Uh, so it has three components, ACN data, which is a real time, uh, real 
and also fine grained data. I will come in, uh, go into a little bit more detail. And then using all the data that we've collected to build a uh, realistic simulator, uh, I'll go into a bit more detail later on. Uh, it's not only an EV charging simulator, but it's also integrated with grid simulator so that you can study the grid impact of, let's say if you have uh, 50 such smart charging garages on a feeder, what will be the impact on the grid, for example? And then the third piece is uh, ACN Life uh, that is still being developed. And the idea is that we want to allow people who are interested in developing new EV charging algorithms to test their algorithm after they have tested it on ACN SIM and so on, and to test their algorithm on real cars at Caltech. So that's the idea. So the details are described in uh, conference papers uh, listed below. Okay, so let me go into a little bit more detail of each of the three components, ACN data. So now we have uh, 53,000 charging sessions uh, publicly available. Uh, we have a lot more, but it's being made available uh, publicly. So these charging sessions come from three sites, uh, Caltech, JPL, and also an office building in the Bay Area. Uh, and this is the website. Uh, you can get all the data and other information. Uh, you just grow the data set is growing daily. Uh, you can use the data for, for example, monitoring user behavior, evaluating charging algorithms, evaluating charging facilities, um, and think about how you might use that for providing grid services, for example, and also evaluating grid impacts and other things. So just some examples of that. So this shows the laxity. So the x-axis is laxity, uh, session duration minus the minimum charging time. If you do uncontrolled charge, the, when the EV is plugged in, you charge it at its peak rate. That gives you the minimum charging time. Uh, so the difference between the duration of your session when you depart um, minus when you arrive and that minimum charging time is the laxity. So here it shows, for example, uh, 80 at Caltech facility, 80% uh, of the sessions have laxity bigger than one hour. 50% has laxity uh, bigger than five hours. So there's a lot of laxity at Caltech. This is weekdays, JPL, similar story and so on. So this is the use of flexibility. Now, if you exploit that, then you can look at uh, the impact on the site. So if we just look at the uh, this uh, data point, uh, this is from simulation, uh, optimal scheduling versus uncontrolled. Then this says that at Caltech, for example, if you do uncontrolled charging, you will need 3.8 times more facility. So this will be the transformers, the breakers, the uh, size of the wire cables and all of that. So this, and therefore by optimal scheduling or the EV charging, you can reduce the capital costs. Now, because you can also reduce the demand charge, you can also reduce the operating costs. And that's how you can uh, enable large scale EV charging. So these are just some uh, scattered plots of the duration of the charging session and the energy delivered on each session. Um, and you can look at the uh, basic marginal distribution uh, here, but the, this is a scattered plot and this line gives you the most common level two charging rate, which is about six kilowatt. Uh, there's some uh, outliers. These are the uh, Tesla, Tesla uh, EVs. And we also have some uh, special chargers that allow it to draw currents at 80 m, so much higher charging rate. You can learn user behavior. So this is the arrival times, departure times. You can build Gaussian mixture models and try to uh, uh, predict that. Uh, and then you can test the accuracy uh, in sample, out, sa out sample, do the standard uh, machine learning thing. But uh, in addition to charging sessions, which consists of most uh, mainly arrival time, departure time, and energy deliver, uh, as well as other information. Uh, more importantly, we have charging rate. So, so these are time series, uh, time resolutions of five to 10 seconds. Uh, so for, at, five to 10 second resolution, we get the actual charging rate for every car. We actually get both the actual current delivered to each EV, but also the control signal that says that 
charge at no more than this, say, 32 amp. But the EV can draw currents up to 32 amp. So we have both curves. Uh, now, one thing one can do, for example, is to say, use the charging curve measurement, try to learn the battery behavior. Um, and the challenge is that we do not know the SAC because the current protocol does not, um, does not uh, uh, communicate the SOC from the car to the charger. And therefore that's the challenge. Um, we have to look at, for example, uh, the tail behavior of a charging curve. Uh, so the charging curve, a typical charging curve may look something like this in the ideal case. So in the first phase, uh, it has a constant current and then the current starts to drop when the voltage uh, reaches a th threshold. Uh, but also, uh, so because we don't know SOC, it's very really difficult to classify this. And therefore we are relying on extracting the tail behavior and then classify the charging curves based on the tail behavior. Now the challenge then is that, well, the Anyone who deals with real data will know that it's usually very messy. You have to clean them. There are lots of uh, interference on the behavior. For example, the observed charging curve, especially during this period, uh, is, not, is a function not only of your battery behavior, but also the control algorithm that we apply. And therefore, uh, how do you even extract the tail from a given time series? So that's non-trivial. Non and it turns out the way you extract your tail will affect your cluster result and vice versa. Once you cluster your charging tails, then you, you can use it to improve your uh, tail extraction and therefore get into this cycle. Uh, it's an interesting learning problem that you extract the tail, you do the clustering based on the tail, and then you go back and improve your extraction and so on. So there's an interesting um, algorithm uh, and, and potentially theory uh, probably that can be built on, on how to deal with these real charging curves. So these are just some examples. Oh, so I skip. Oh, there's some there's some other people's paper using the data set, including Ormis. Uh, but I think I skipped that because uh, I, I just I hit the slides because of the time. But anyway, so the so that's ACN data. ACN seem, so the idea is that using the measurements we have, all different kinds of measurements, you can build a model for the battery. I mentioned a little bit of that, uh, how EV behaves, how user behaves, how EVSD, the chargers behave, and different constraints for your, say, electric distribution infrastructure, for example, and the charging networks and so on. And then you can build these event queues for simulations and so on that is in, uh, integrated with ACN data. So you can use the real data to drive your uh, simulators. And then you have a simulator that can take signals from uh, external, such as the utility pricing information, on-site solar generation information, or weather information if you want, and, and so on and so forth. So all of this can be utilized for, for example, optimizing your charging algorithm. And then you can, so this is the ACN sim. It has a very simple interface. If you define your own algorithm, whether it is charging algorithm, is pricing algorithm, or whatever algorithm that's relevant, you can interface with a simulator and then uh, uh, use a simulator to evaluate your design, for example, so that you don't have to worry about uh, all this detailed simulating, uh, simulation models and just focus on your algorithm design. So it's open source, extensible. Hopefully um, you might find this useful for your own research and uh, you can contribute back to uh, improve the simulator. So for example, you can use this to uh, evaluate what is the large scale EV charging uh, impact on the, to, to use it to mitigate the duct curve. So I will skip that. Uh, oh, okay, maybe I'll tell a little bit because it related to the pricing part. So the, the model we use is very simple. They are, say, uh, this is the offline model. Now then you do MPC to convert to a online uh, model. And that's actually how we operate the system. So in the offline setting, you have uh, N EVs over a day, for example. Uh, you have control intervals, say every minute, you try to determine the charging rate for every EV in, in the garage, active in the garage. Each EVI is parameterized by four uh, parameters. How much energy they demand, so 30 miles. Um, the arrival time, 
the departure time di, and then the p charging rate. P charging rate is, is, is not important. It's really imposed by the EV charger itself. Typically it's 32 M. So you cannot charge at higher than this rate. It's just some parameter. But also you can use this um, P charging rate as a function of time. Then you, you may say that the, there's actually time varying uh, P capacity, not because of your EVSE or the charger equipment, uh, but maybe there's some other reasons um, and people actually do that and they set uh, their cars to charge at a certain time and so on. So all those can be easily modeled through this RI bar, uh, but time varying version. And then, uh, so that's the EV model, it's very simple EV model. Uh, what we want is to compute the RIT, which is the charging rate, think of that as current M for every EVI, at every time t, so every minute, for example. So they lies within this. And also this will include the arrival departure information. So ri bar of t will be zero before the arrival time and after the departure time. So that zeroes out the charging rate rit. And this is for every evi, you initially will have equality, which means that you will provide exactly the amount of energy EI that the user I request. Uh, but because of feasibility issues and so on and so forth, it's easier to use a inequality, but then you need to make sure your uh, charging uh, objective function will not favor just give everyone zero rate and so on. So you, you can design your optimization problem to do the right thing. But this is basically the energy uh, demand uh, inequality. And then you can, oh, and then this infrastructure constraint. And the reason it becomes a quadratic constraint, but still convex, is because of three phase structure, uh, three phase distribution system. If you write down the actual constraint, it takes a uh, SOCP uh, second order cone constraint. Uh, you can also use linear approximation. That's um, uh, what we originally used as well. So you have an uh, EV model, you have the um, constraints on your charging rate, and then you have the infrastructure constraint, then the final piece is simply what is the objective function. And it's customizable. Depending on the site host, you can optimize different objectives. So if you want to uh, minimize the demand charge, if you want to um, help minimize the RAM rate for a duck curve that would require coordination across multiple uh, charging garages and so on. Um, so whatever the, or you want to minimize the electricity uh, payment, uh, then you can all encode them in your uh, uh, objective function. So you formulate that, then you just do, so that was the offline model and you can do a online model using MPC. So every minute you form this QCQP, solve it, you charge your rate. And then you do that, you can use uh, real data from ACN. You do uh, simulate this in ACN SIM uh, using Kai, Cal ISO, solar and low data, and then you can look at what would be the impact if you're large, say five million of EVs, um, and you charge it in a way that will minimize the RAM rate, for example. Okay, ACN Live, so as I mentioned, so this is ongoing. You can have the same interface, but underlying that this is the real garage at, at Caltech. So if you have an EV charging algorithm, let's say every minute, you can use your algorithm to determine the charging rate for every EV in the garage. The system, which is still in development, will do a bunch of checks to make sure it is safe. And then if it is, it will pass your charging uh, command to the chargers in the garage. And then you will measure the state, send it back to your algorithm and your algorithm can repeat. So that's the idea. Again, it's open source, extensible. Hopefully um, it will be useful. Ah, here, okay. So there's some examples that people use the, the, uh, the EV uh, data and also ACN SIM to look at say, how do we do phase balancing, for example, uh, recent paper. Another one, this is using that to uh, look at um, modeling optimization of aggregate flexibility of distributed loads. So that's a very interesting and uh, non-trivial problem. How do you think about aggregate flexibility? Ah, this is Omis paper. Um, use ACN SIM to study the application of reinforcement learning to optimize decentralized EV charging, for example. Okay, so let me finish 
by uh, the third part. Let me just look at the clock. Okay. So this is, um, how do we think about demand charge? So again, demand charge is that every building period, think of that as a month, uh, a site host will pay not only for the energy, electricity uh, that it consumes to the utility company, but also pay a demand charge based on the peak rate in that month, at the end of the month. Okay. So this is um, uh, what we uh, published in PSCC 2020. Okay, so let me, right. So this is the online additive charging. Uh, this is what we saw before. You solve a QC, QP every minute. Um, so, that's the, so that's how we charge the uh, EVs, right? Now, how do we price the uh, charging? So the idea is that we want to design the charging, uh, the pricing system, um, sorry, the charging design. So the point is that we want to separate, we want to separate the charging and the pricing. The char charging um, system must adapt to system state in real time. So this could include, for example, if you're participating in demand charge or you're providing grid services, then the capacity uh, available for EV charging may be time varying. If you do demand charge mitigation, then depending on the background low or building load changes, uh, depending on the uh, PV, on-site PV generation, then your net available capacity for EV charging may also change. So there are all kinds of stuff that can change in your charging system and the charging design must adapt to that. And you must um, be able to satisfy EV drivers energy demand before their deadline. And you also need to take care of the objectives, which may be site dependent. So that's all the charging design need to uh, take care of. Now the pricing design though, the goal is to recover costs from the individual EVs, but we want to do that in a way that will, so that they, uh, the pricing will take, uh, recover the cost of the energy that you deliver to each EV but also the externalities uh, for, uh, of individual EVs. What is the impact to the system peak, which will affect the demand charge on, uh, for their cycles? Externality on the infrastructure, how much say um, capacity for, uh, for your breakers and uh, transformers and panels need, right? So how you charge them or the demands for each e individual EVs eventually needs to be taken care of by building appropriate infrastructure. So the pricing should take care of all this. And if you have a different set of um, uh, objectives uh, that you try to achieve through charging design and through pricing design. And our idea is to say, let's decouple the two so that the drivers receive their energy in time at minimum payment, and we'll see what, what that means. The charging is socially optimized by the MPC, with, which we saw earlier. Then how do we design a pricing structure so that the site host can fully recover the electricity costs, those three components? So let me start with the conclusion. <laughs> um, so the conclusion where we propose uh, a little bit unconventional is that you do offline pricing, which means that the, so this is work uh, place and therefore almost all users, most of them, uh, you know who they are, they register and they are relatively regular. And therefore you can do this monthly billing just like your utility, right? Or your credit card. So at the end of the month, the billing period, you, compo uh, you compute a exposed session price for EVI. So that's for um, each session uh, for that user. And then the driver will say, okay, for that session I, um, uh, I for that session I, I have uh, received this EI amount of energy. So this, we don't need to forecast, look at the actual energy delivered in session I for this user, multiplied by the session price. That's how much they, they will pay monthly. Now, uh, details explained in the paper. This is the minimum cost that you user, um, that the user pays actually um, compared with uh, uh, the uh, alternative pricing. Let me just leave it at that. So that's the, um, that's the pricing design. 
Okay, again, offline at the end of the billing period, you look at uh, the exposed energy deliver, you, uh, you charge it at the session price, that's it, that's the monthly bill. Now, why do we come up with this design? So let me go into a little bit of detail of the pricing design. So suppose the objective is to minimize the cost of the site host. So the site host will see a time varying TOU prices from utility company, for example. This is the charging rate, the aggregate charging rate of the site, sum over all the EVs I at each time T, multiplied by the price, sum over the T. So that's the total energy price over the entire month. This is the demand charge, that's the dollars per kilowatt, also from the utility. So PT, small PT, and the big P are given parameters for the utility. So those are the prices, uh, energy price and demand charge price. And you look at the maximum aggregate rate for that site, maximum over T, that's the P load. So in practice, what you do is look at 15 minute, the maximum 15 minute energy, uh, that will give you the P demand divided by 15 minutes, that's the P load multiplied by the demand charge. That's how much the demand charge to the site host will pay. Suppose the goal is to, okay, so what is the minimum system cost to meet the demand, right? And this is where uh, the EV drivers will be paying minimum. Uh, it, it comes from here. Again, this is not that how we charge them. This is how we price them. By charging the RIT for the charging is determined by MPC separately. But this is, if you want to minimize the cost, then this RIT vector will give you the charging pattern which can be different from the actual charging pattern. And, and this is why the EVs, when they pay the way uh, we designed the pricing, they are actually paying the minimum, absolute minimum cost in order to sustain the entire system. So how do we determine the minimum system cost to meet the demand, that's one. Secondly, how do we fairly allocate the system cost to individual drivers? So that's the question that the pricing design needs to answer. So here's the solution. In order to price the, uh, the minimize the system cost, you simply minimize the, um, this, uh, this objective function subject to you will meet EV driver demand. So in this case, we do use a equality um, or inequality. There's some design details we can uh, uh, which we skip. The infrastructure capacity, um, so this is a linearized version. You could do a uh, SOC, uh, convex SOC constraint to be more efficient in terms of infrastructure utilization. Uh, the P low and also the system P is, uh, this, this is system P. Um, okay, so that's, okay. So you solve this, that will give you the charging rate for every EV, every time over the entire month in order to meet energy demand before the deadline, right? So that's the minimum system cost to provide charging service. So let's call the minimum cost C min, okay? So that's uh, pricing design. Then you do this standard analysis and so on, you get a uh, price for every EV every time. So this is a real time price. It consists of the energy price from the utility, so that is given, and three other parameters that depends on the Lagrange multipliers for the problem in the previous slide. Roughly, you can think of this is the network congestion cost, that is the, all the transformers and breakers and so on. Those capacity give you a Lagrange, pli, Lagrange multiplier that gives you a congestion, network congestion price. This is the charger, so the charger limits your rate to say 32M or ADM, whatever it is that induces a certain Lagrange multiplier that you can think of a charger congestion price. And then there's a demand charge. Um, so one natural way to do it is to say, every driver for their session I, they will simply say for session I, I'm charged, the EV is charged at the rate and this rate is from the, from the MPC charging, but this price, is from the pricing design PIT above here, right? And then I sub sum over the time in session I. That's what I pay for my session. 
and then each driver comes in, charge their car, and then pay for that session uh, on session by session basis. So that's one design, but it turns out you don't need to do that. You don't need to keep track of this um, uh, session price and so on. Because the design principle is that you have a real-time session price, and then each session pays this quantity we saw in the previous slide. But it turns out that this quantity equals the energy delivered for that session times a single parameter, which you can think of as a session price. You don't need a different price at different time for the session. You just look at one single number that is a session price for the entire session. Then the, if you do the real-time price, you will get the same quantity. And therefore the idea is that don't do the real-time pricing at the end of the month, you look at the energy um, deliver, you compute this monthly session price, then that's what the user pay for every session in that month uh, for the user. So if you do that, then you look at the payment, total payment to the site host from all the EVs. It will indeed recover, uh, cover their costs, the minimum costs. Um, and the difference between what the site host gets and what it needs to pay the um, utility at the minimum cost is determined by the congestion prices. Um, okay, so this is just a recap. At the end of the month, you compute expo session price using the data collected. You look at the actual energy delivered and then you charge each session uh, by this amount, charge each driver by their um, session uh, payment. Yeah, so there's no uncertainty because everything's exposed uh, and you don't need to forecast prices or anything like that. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I'm done. This is the website where you can get a lot more information and hopefully it'll be useful for, uh, some, to some of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen, for the great talk and uh, exciting results that you shared with us today. Um, we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself or uh, put it in the chat box. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Stephen, yes, uh, th thanks for the very interesting talk and uh, very informative. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess uh, I'd like to ask some question about the pricing part. Uh, is it a cor under correct understanding when the user actually get is charging the EV, he or she may not have an idea of how much he need to he or she need to pay at the end of the month, right? Ah, great question, indeed. So um, that indeed that is the case. Now in practice, what you can do, you can look at the historical data, you can do some kind of forecast, and then you can give them a estimated price for that session. Um, I see. But, but, but you're right, in theory, they don't know. And that's a, uh, that's a potential down, well, it is a downside of this. Uh, uh, this this scheme indeed. So okay. so uh, again, I just uh, want to repeat what I said earlier that I think for public charging place this may be an important downside. For workplace, this might be uh, okay because these hmm. are the people who come regularly, right? So you send them a monthly bill at the end of the month, sort of. I see, and and you also mentioned the price. They uh, the I think it's the the pie. Pi star T, which is, uh, although it's not the section price at the end, but uh, the, yeah, I think one slide before, or, right, even further. Yeah, I he here you said it's a incentive of compatibility. So um, I was wondering what, 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 what do you- What does that what mean? Does, and exactly, yeah. Right, right. So, so it's a, a standard, uh, uh, a, a standard notion, which means that if you, um, give this PIT to EVI at time T to say, here's your unit price for the charging rate. How much mm. do you want your own RIT? Then if they, um, they do the optimization, they will come up with an RIT that is socially optimal, meaning that you will, you will, you will, uh, you will, op you will solve this problem. You will be the I same RIT, so, yeah. I see, I see, I see. And, and one last question uh, is that uh, in some, 
I'm not sure. Uh, in some sense, I think uh, charging the pricing the EV within the, the charging station somehow gave me the impression, a uh, similar feeling of the utility to charging the large load customer, uh, like doing by doing the real time pricing and the take demand charge. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, uh, uh, I may not, may not know that you know. I just this just popped into my mind. Is is that these two problems similar to each other, or what is the major difference? Suppose I'm a utility, and I want. I also need to concern about about the peak, uh, concern about the congestion level, and I also want the you know the load, uh, the the large load customer who has installed let's say battery or energy storage system to have some level uh, to be able to react to my price signal or demand charge signal so that they can give me uh, that so that I can lower my cost, right? So uh, it seems they are also facing a problem that is very similar to what you are studying here. Yes, um, yes. The main difference here um, is a uh, one main difference is that at the utility level, they need to worry about the network. So the network, mm. then you need to worry about the power flow equations and all of that. So here, mm. the corresponding thing will be this, will be the infrastructure uh, mm. capacity limit. Um, so he, their, their infrastructure capacity limits will be much more complicated. Uh, here, mm. this is much simpler. I see, I see. So potentially and, some of the discussion here can also be applied uh, to the utility level of the how to do the pricing access i think so but then there's another simplification in our problem which is the demand charge right so mm -hmm. here what we want is that okay the utility give me a price capital p and is going to affect uh, uh, the p rate uh, in my optimization that's relatively simple in their case why do they care about uh, p rate because they need to build infrastructure to take care of the peak and, right. and that uh, is a lot more complicated than this. But it mm -hmm. depends on how you model them. You could approximate this complicated capacity expansion and investment and all of those complications. Uh, maybe you might be able to approximate that by some parameter, one single parameter or a small set. Uh, but, but this is where another uh, thing that I think is simpler in, in our problem. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. But, but you're right, the, the qualitative um, uh, issues that are involved uh, are very similar. Okay, Thank, thanks. Yeah, appreciate that. Sure, thanks. Uh, hi, Stephen. Uh, this is Dan. I, I also have a question. Hi, Dan. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi. Uh, it's a very nice talk. I, I have a question about uh, your simulator. Uh, so uh -huh. number one, can you describe the simulator a, bit, a little bit in more detail? And number two, um, what are the major challenges when you develop this simulator? And what are the criteria that, that, that you think it is a good simulator? Uh, uh, right. When you okay. develop it, the simulator uh, in mind, the criteria that you keep in mind. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let me go to the simulators. I'm not sure I can answer completely your question. <laughs> if my students are here, he will be able to go into a lot more concrete details. So, um, uh, so the, basically from the uh, ACN data, we can build a battery model. Now battery model can be very complicated. Omid is, uh, is much more uh, expert. Um, so you can, you can start with an extremely simple model that doesn't even need the ACN data. Well, maybe you need it for, uh, for a few things. And then you can um, progressively try to build a battery behavior model based on the data to be more and more accurate so, so on. So that's one piece. EV behavior, right now we have a very simple EV behavior. Um, uh, is um, mostly the, uh, from the session data that when EVs will arrive and so on. And then the EVSC behavior is also very simple. It's just a peak rate. But you can imagine if there's a need, I'm not sure there will be a need, but if there's a need, you can imagine you can swap out all these components and replace them with much more 
detailed uh, models of say the EVs or the EVSCs, right? The EV, for example, he has his own uh, onboard battery management system. We we'll have no information about that, but there are literatures on that. So if you want to uh, have a more detailed EV model, you can use those literatures on how battery management system uh, behaves and incorporate it into your EV, for example. So these are the sort of components, right? So, so the charging network also right now we have, we have very simple, essentially is the, all the breakers and uh, panels and uh, transformers uh, and, and cables and so on. And to us right now, it's just the capacity, uh, right? So it's relatively simple, but you can imagine you, uh, that again, if there's a need to include, let's say, uh, the resistance, the impedance on the lines, you can, you can have power, uh, power flow equations and all of that. And therefore you can also swap out this component and replace it with a much more detailed model, right? So, so these are uh, how the design, uh, uh, at least um, what we try to uh, maintain in the design is very modular. And the other pieces are more the standard simulator uh, components. Does that answer your question? Uh, do you meet any challenges or headaches when you develop this uh, simulator? Uh, okay, again, this is where the student can tell you a lot more detail. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Um, but one thing I guess I, I, I should uh, uh, emphasize that I mentioned before, is that the simulator is also integrated with, uh, say, OpenDSS for those who you might okay. know. So the, yeah, and, and also um, um, Map Power, I think, is being integrated with Map Power, um, and and therefore you can hopefully easily use this simulator uh, to investigate, say, grid issues. Um, it's also integrated with. AI gym so that people who are interested in machine learning might use it, but there is, is uh, apparently not extremely easy to use. <laughs> so I see. Okay, so, yeah. Thank so you. Sure. So Stephen, I also have a very quick question uh, regarding the, um, the uh, new part of this uh, project that you talked about, ACN Live. Um, so uh, I assume you can provide a charging um, schedule or a control policy, and it will tell you uh, exactly whether uh, like the charge power uh, can be, uh, let's say, admitted, uh, if it's an admissible uh, charging power or not, or maybe it's lowered a little bit because of the SOC of the battery, right? Because it can't be charged at that level. So is this exactly how it works? So this is still under development. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some delay because we need to work with the, uh, the startup or mm -hmm. the company of mm -hmm. <laughs> And therefore, um, it, uh, th there's some delay and therefore not implemented yet. Mm -hmm. But what you said is the in indeed is our intention. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the idea is that you can do whatever you want in the algorithm. All the interface or our system sees is that, let's say every minute, we get a charging command from you. However you compute that. And then we, what we need is to check that it is safe. For example, if we use this charging command at this minute, we will still be able to satisfy energy demands before their deadlines for those EVs, for example. Mm -hmm. And if not, then we'll ignore the charging demand, use the default, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Which is in PowerFlex charging system already. Mm -hmm. If we do whatever checks that we need to check, and we think that it is safe and, and reliable and all of that, then we pass your demand. So we, instead of passing powerless charging demand to the chargers, we'll pass your demand to these chargers. Mm -hmm. And the charger will actually charge according to your demand for that minute. And then what we pass you back is mostly, I mean, the other information, but the most important thing is what is the actual current drawn by the EV? Mm -hmm. And therefore you can calculate, for example, well, what is the en remaining energy demand for that EV, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you can do whatever you want and give me another set of charging demands. And then I repeat the cycle. So that's the idea. Mm 
-hmm. So, um, so that's very interesting because we tried to use um, like uh, the simulator for reinforcement learning. And one of the um, problems we have is that in many cases, the charging uh, demand that we provide, the charging power that we provide to the simulator, it's not a safe charging power because the agent is doing exploration. And uh, ah. during this exploration, you sometimes want to try crazy things, right? So yeah. you want to charge it, let's say, at a rate that may not be um, like a really good rate, but you want to evaluate the value function. Uh, or yes. the, uh, so, so in those cases, I was um, curious whether it would be possible, because obviously we can't charge uh, the, the battery at that rate, otherwise we damage it, right? right. But would it be possible to create a model uh, that uh, because we part of the environment is um, unknown and that is the state of charge of the battery uh, ambient temperature that determines whether this charge power is feasible or not right but whether it would be possible to create a model that takes the um, let's say the intended action that is charged at this rate um, and it also has the state of charge or predictions of state of state of charge as well as prediction of the battery temperature and it tells you what would be the action uh, that can be actually implemented. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, so you touch upon many um, interesting and, and some uh, difficult uh, points. So one is that if you want to do it in a live setting, mm -hmm. uh, I think that is a challenge. And indeed people are, uh, some people are working on this safe, safety critical reinforcement learning thing mm -hmm. precisely to try to address the issues that you mentioned. So on the one hand, you need to explore. On the other hand, for some systems, uh, EV charging may or may not be uh, such a system that you cannot violate, right? Because you, you can imagine if you're controlling a uh, drone or, <laughs> or, <laughs> a without, or whatever, there's a safety critical applications where there will be hard constraints that you don't want to violate. Now, how do you, when you do reinforcement learning or learning in general uh, online, uh, how do you make sure you satisfy those safety constraints? So that's a big open question and that's relevant here. And I think uh, no one really knows. I mean, I certainly don't know what would be a good solution to that. Uh, so that's one aspect if you want to do this live. But the second thing though is, I think what you said can be a really interesting, uh, where is it? Uh, very interesting uh, project on the ACN SIM, right? Almost exactly uh, the way you describe it, let's say here, um, right? That uh, the, the kind of things that you mentioned, for example, uh, you can build into the EBSC where you can do your forecast and either offline, online, and so on and so forth. And then you can build into your EVSC, uh, 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 sorry, not, not EVSC, uh, battery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how that will behave and so on and so forth. So the, the kind of stuff that you talk about that will allow you to uh, explore uh, in the context of reinforcement learning, I think can be uh, done within ACN SIM. Mm -hmm. uh, the current ACN SIM does not do that, um, but uh, but that anyone that might be interested in extending that would be fantastic. Yeah. 